Number one. When I was a freshman in high school, 2011, I was 15 years old. I had this little group of friends from middle school that I hung out with. We were all girls and there were four of us. So every Friday, the mom of one of my friends would pick us up and we would go get frozen yogurt and then go to the mall where my friend's mom would set us loose and tell us to meet her back at the central part of the mall around 6 p.m. So this one Friday, we were all walking around and shopping and we decided to get food at the food court. Normally, we wouldn't split up, but the other three girls wanted Carl's Jr. and I wanted Panda Express. So I told them I would meet them at our table and I went to the other side of the food court to get my food. After I got my food, I was grabbing chopsticks and napkins and stuff when this older man, maybe in his 40s, walks up to me. He was fairly well groomed and was wearing a suit. He asked me how old I was, so I told him I was 15. He said that was perfect because he was from a modeling agency and they were looking for girls my age to be models for a junior's clothing line. My naive self was really excited, so he gave me this card about the size of a postcard that had all the agency info on it and stuff. I think I ended up leaving it on the table after I ate, and I had pretty much forgotten it by the time I got home. The same sort of thing happened a few other times I went to the mall with friends. Fast forward about five years to April 2016. In one of my college classes, we had a speaker come in who was from an organization dedicated to stopping sex trafficking. I live in a city that's like second highest in the country or something for sex trafficking, so it was fitting. Anyway, this woman was talking about different ways that traffickers will lure girls and boys into going with them and getting into the trade. Something she said struck me, so I stayed after class and I told her the story I just told you. She said they knew about this tactic and had gotten reports of it happening at the mall I used to go to every week. She said it was very likely that the man who approached me was looking to get me into the trade. Number two. Firstly, let me say I don't think I'm the most attractive, but I am aware that a few things about me tend to be fetishized or something. I get a lot of creepy stares and unwanted attention, but this is one of the most frightening things that has ever happened to me. I went to a job interview, so I was sort of dressed up. I thought the interview went well, and it was a hot day, so I decided to treat myself and stop at Jamba Juice before heading home. I got my drink and stepped outside. As I dug in my purse searching for keys and phone to call my husband, a voice directly behind me says, Pretty little girl like you should be wearing perfume. I was so startled, I didn't know what to do or say. I stumbled a step away from him, nearly falling on the cobblestones in my high heels, nearly spilling my drink, and just remembering that I didn't have my knife with me because it was in my other purse. I straightened myself and gave him a look, then found my keys and headed for my car. Behind me, I heard, Miss, you dropped this. Without stopping, I looked over my shoulder. It was the receipt for my smoothie. I said I didn't need it. I'm very petite and in high heels, so I wasn't walking fast at all. My heart was already pounding because this guy gave me the creeps. The way he talked and the way he looked at me. He was the smooth talking type. Anyway, I wasn't moving very fast but was trying to get to my car quickly without looking panicked. I heard him catching up to me. He said, I just want to talk. A girl like you should have the finest perfume on her body. I got some samples in my truck. Oh, hell no. This guy was already giving me red flag vibe, and now he literally invited me to the trunk of his car. He was now walking alongside me, but a few feet to my left. I said I don't wear perfume and I'm not interested. He stopped and fell behind. I looked back. He was walking back to the storefront. 
I relaxed a little and slowed down almost to a stop to dig around for my phone again. I was almost to my car when I heard footsteps, fast and quiet, running, but trying to be as quiet as possible about it. I spun around and the guy was only a few feet away from me. My hand still in my bag, his hand almost in his pocket. I felt the adrenaline kick in. Suddenly, I could hear and smell everything. I felt a warmth spread down my arms and legs, and I had incredible calm and focus. I didn't have my knife on me, but he didn't know what I was reaching for in my purse. I decided if he came closer, I could try to use my keys or five-inch heel. We stared at each other for what felt like a lifetime, but I'm sure it was only a few moments. He said, You should really come check it out. His voice sounded normal, but the rest of his body was tense. I shifted my grip on my keys in my bag so they were between my fingers. We never broke eye contact. I said no, and thank God my voice didn't waver. He put on a strained smile and said, Okay, maybe next time and winked with faux cheeriness. He took a couple steps backward, then turned and walked away. I didn't move. This time, I watched him walk all the way back to his car, where he opened his trunk and rifled through whatever was in there. He was definitely far enough away now, even though he kept glancing over at me. I got in my car and drove a few lights before I pulled over, back into the parking lot of the hospital where I had just interviewed. The adrenaline wore off already, and the realization of what happened flooded me with fear. I started crying and finally called my husband. He wanted to come get me, but had no car available, too far to bus. It was rush hour. He stayed on the phone with me until I was calm enough to drive home. I'm only four foot 10, 90 to 95 pounds. If he really wanted to, that guy could have fairly easily dragged me away. Number three. I have had so very many creepy experiences growing up in New York City and traveling the world for business and pleasure. This is the first truly creepy encounter I had in my lifetime and has forever altered my perception of strangers. I remember it like it was yesterday and I am in my 30s. I was about four years old and living in a very safe apartment complex, doorman, cameras everywhere, etc., in a well-to-do neighborhood in New York City. It was a warm day and my mom and I were downstairs checking our mailbox in the lobby. Siblings were at school, dad was at the office. Since it was warm, the doors of both exits on the main lobby floor were both open, in essence allowing for anyone from off the street to access the building. I don't believe anyone thought this was a problem at the time because as I stated before, there were cameras everywhere and a doorman stationed in the middle of the lobby, whose sole purpose was to open and close the doors for residents and guests, sign for packages, and monitor the cameras via CCTV. I was about 10 feet from mom at the mailboxes, dancing and twirling around in my own little world, when all of a sudden a large man, and I mean large, like 300 pounds and well over 6 feet, came charging from behind me, running like a damn linebacker. In less than a few seconds, he picked me up with ease, flung me over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes, and started running toward the exit at the end of the lobby which led to the street. It was so surreal. Everything went so fast and yet so slow, if that makes sense. I was screaming and my obese, slow, but super nice doorman came sauntering to see what was going on. My mom, who was about five foot three, 110, 120 pounds, was much faster than our doorman. After hearing her child yelling, she ran, jumped on the man's back, grabbed me off of him and started pounding on his back hard. The doorman was still trying to catch up, long lobby. He was really no help at all. The would-be kidnapper never looked back. He just kept running and eventually made it to the exit and back onto the streets. 
My mom said the guy reeked of alcohol and appeared to be homeless. No police report was ever filed. Who knows why my mom chose not to report the incident to the police. Afterward, though, my mom became extremely protective of me. When I started kindergarten the next year, instead of the school bus, she walked me to and from school a few blocks away. She did this every day until I was in junior high school. Um, embarrassing and rarely let me go to my friend's home or for overnight class trips. This event traumatized her more than me and is a sore spot for her. I think she feels guilty, although she did nothing wrong. She actually saved my life. Number four. A couple of years ago, I had a really traumatic experience that messed up my nerves real bad. I was 15 years old, I'm 18 now, and my sister, who was three years older than me, was really sick and decided to stay home from school one morning, which meant I had to walk all by myself. By the walk, I mean the 10 minute walk from our small five bedroom house to the not so lively bus stop. I had never walked by myself, so I was really scared, but I didn't want to make my dad late to work since we really needed the money. I sucked it up after telling my sister to never speak to me again and started out into the thick fog with the flashlight my mom had given me. Now, in order to get to the bus stop, I had to cross a swamp, which wasn't really deep, but it had plenty of frogs, bugs, and raccoons that my sister and I often stopped to play with, minus the raccoons. As I stepped onto the piece of wood that led to the other side, I heard footsteps and rustling. I quickly peeked over my shoulder and saw a man in a bright red sweater with the brightest blonde hair my 15-year-old eyes had ever seen. I was confused as to why he was back here, since no one but my sister and I ever took this way, but I shrugged it off and made my way to the other side of the swamp. Now after I get across the swamp, there's a set of railroad tracks I have to cross, and there's always a train that my sister and I usually climb over, since it never really moves. But when I got close to it, I heard shuffling and whistling behind me, and when I turned around, there he was again, just looking at me. I sized him up really quickly and realized if he was going to try anything, all I could do was run. I was 98 pounds on a good day and I was only 5 foot 2. This man looked to be at least 200 pounds and he towered over me. I quickly climbed up on the train and slid through the empty space between the two cars. I sighed as I glanced behind me and didn't see the man so I continued my walk the way I did with my sister. When I got to the corner that was across from the bus stop, I whistled into the yard of the corner house. The giant white German shepherd that used to always walk us to school leaped out and jumped up around me. Since we didn't really know his name, we called him Bus. We named him when I was 11 and my sister 15. When Bus and I got to the stop, I opened up my lunch and let him eat my PB&J sandwich. We sat like that while I rubbed his fur, but then out of nowhere, his ears perked up and he started to growl really low. I got really scared since my stop was across from the woods and I thought a wolf was getting near, but then I saw him. The same man, he was at the corner that I stood at not too long ago, except this time he stared at Bus with a frightened look in his eyes. I felt my chest tighten as I sat on the ground and curled up into Bus, not daring to look at the man. Three minutes later, Bus stopped growling and I glanced at the watch on my wrist, which read 740, five more minutes. I sent Bus off as I saw the bus coming through the fog. Once it stopped, I wasted no time climbing on and swiping my card before greeting the small old lady that gave my sister and I cookies every morning. Just as the doors were closing, a body squeezed through the doors and the bus driver quickly opened them. Hey, sorry man, I didn't see you. 
I tried not to let my shock show as the man that I was certainly sure had been following me sat across from me, cheesing his annoying smile. Two minutes into the ride, he started saying how pretty I was and that he liked my pants, and he asked what school I went to. I lied and made up a name, and he asked my grade. When I told him I was only a freshman, he smiled and said, A senior? So you're almost legal. He laughed and scooted up in his seat, gaining a reaction from the lady who gave me cookies. She slid over next to me and said that I was only a freshman, barely legal. His smile disappeared and he just stared at me as I fiddled with my folders. Eventually, my stop came and I think the man knew because as the bus stopped in front of the school, he stood and looked at me expectantly. The bus driver looked at the back and asked the man if it was his stop. I still hadn't stood up. He looked at me for a while longer before saying no and sitting back down. At this point, I'm pissing my pants. I quickly jumped up and said it was my stop before exiting quickly. When I got to the crossing light, I saw the man standing at the gas station down the corner. Instead of waiting for the light, I just sprinted across the street to the school building. When I got home, my sister told me Bus had been run over by a car and killed. Not only that, but someone dropped my watch off at our house, saying I dropped it in front of the school. All I know is, I never want to meet the man in the red sweater again. Creepy Mina here of the Worst Nightmare Channel. I hope you enjoyed those four stories of women being nearly abducted. I wanted to mention something. If you are a Reddit user, if you have an account on Reddit, and you enjoy the stories that you hear, most of them are from the subreddit Let's Not Meet, sometimes from Creepy Encounters. So if you enjoy them, click the links below and give them a, an upvote. I'm sure they would appreciate that. So please, um, I want to remind you, as I asked last week, if you could please send your paranormal stories to creepymina at gmail.com in anticipation for a Halloween program. And as usual, please do comment below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, Share this video on your favorite social networking platform. Follow me on Twitter as Worst Nightmare 6 for advance notice of all uploaded videos. And always remember to stay safe.